Hello, it's Duncan. There are apparently two schools of TDD, Chicago and London. They are variously described as inside out or outside in, or classic versus mockist. As a not very paid up member of the Extreme Tuesday Club, I lean towards the London approach. But it's very rare these days for me to reach for a mocking framework. And I think that's because in Kotlin, I express dependencies with functions rather than interfaces. In this episode, we'll look at a testing problem that seems perfect for mocks and see how by using functions, we can convert our mocks to maps. So here's our app class, and you see here the code for loading the stock list, which at the moment is really quite simple, but we want to make it quite a bit more complicated. We want to add retrying into it. We want to add reporting errors into it. And we really don't want to have to test that through our app along with building a stock file so it can load rivet and so on. And I know that because I've tried to add that functionality several times, I haven't shown it to you, and every time I've got bogged down in the tests. So what we'd like to do is we'd like to extract this functionality here, along with the functions down here, into something that we can test on its own. We can isolate it for testing. A class is a good unit of isolation, so let's build ourselves a class. What we'll do is we will create this to a block body, and we'll create a class which we'll call priced stock list loader. It's an action class. And we'll add a method to load. And that's going to have the same signature as this, really. It's going to take an instant, but it need not default it. And what's that going to look like? Well, in fact, it's going to look like this. So we've moved that functionality, copied it into our class. Now we can build an instance of that and call it here. So this would be loader, load, now. Will it? Well, the way we find out is to run the tests. And we're right. OK, now this method relies on this stock and this pricing, and you can see those are both resolving to the ones in our outer class. If we're going to pull this out of here, it's going to need its own copies of those. So we take this and say, give me a parameter to the stock list loader. And we can do the same with the pricing parameter. And these are now being passed in from our outer scope into the constructor call. That should mean we can take this thing and move it out of this class altogether. If that compiles, we know we're good, but we'll run the tests. And then we just rename these to be stock and pricing. And now we don't want or need to be creating one of those every time we load the stock list, so we can pull that up to the top level and return this to its single expression. And maybe priced loader would be a better name. OK, now we're in the nicer position that our app class has no logic at all, really. It just sets things up and delegates to other classes. This means that we can pull stock list loader and the two little functions it needs out into another file. So we'll look at that and just run those tests. Good. I think it's a nice little change to commit. So that is introduce priced stock list loader. Good. Here then is our priced stock list loader ready for us to add functionality to it. But before we do, maybe we should add some tests for what it currently does. Why are we doing that? Well, because at the moment, this functionality is only tested through the list stock tests which are the things we've discovered are a pain to set up. I will borrow this static state, though. Oh, and full disclosure, since the last episode, I've actually tidied this up a bit to make the relative times more plausible and the whole thing a little bit simpler. Now, one of the things we know from the list stock tests is that working in terms of this stock list is a bit of a pain. Because it reads and writes from disk, we have to put things onto disk. And because it updates items, we have to cope with items having their quality updated Whereas really all we're interested in here is pricing. So let's go about building ourselves price stock list loader. So we want a loader is a price list loader. And that has two collaborators. One is stock and the other is pricing. Let's create a property for the stock and for the pricing. Let's remind ourselves what a stock looks like. Oh, this is the thing that has the file and the zone ID and how we update items. So we know this is a pain to build but we could mock it. 
So I've added mock, which is a Kotlin-friendly mocking framework, into my build, refreshed the build, and that will allow me to go back into my tests and say, I'd like to just mock that. And pricing, that's a function type, that's an interface as well, so I should probably be able to mock that as well. And if I've done that, then I can write a test. Loads and prices, items. Now I should be able to call load on my loader, giving it some time. Let's just see what happens when I do. Okay, the test fails. And the reason is because we haven't told mock what to do when we call stock, asking it to load a stock list. Okay, we can fix that. So we can say every time I call stock, stock list, giving it this time, returns. And what does it return? Well, we've got a stock list here and we know we're returning a result type. So that's success of this stock list. So that means we can pretend to have loaded it from disk rather than actually having to set it up on disk which is great. Run again. Well, that passes, which surprises me because I think we should have the same problem with the pricing. We should have had to set up an expectation on that. Let's just see what it is we actually get out of here. And we can do that by just saying assert equals anything, let's say success of the stock list. We don't expect that to pass because our loader will be adding prices, but let's see what we actually get. does fail. Ah, so inside our pricing, we obviously threw an exception, but we were catching that and populating an error type. Well, that's a bit confusing, but I think we brought it on ourselves. So let us now add some expectations for pricing. So we'll say that every time you call pricing, that's the invoke on pricing with, well, this is our stock list. So we can say our stock list items zero. Let's return some price. And here's one that we should be able to recognize when we see it. And I think for what it's worth, stock list is actually a list of items. So we can just take that out. So we can say that the second one returns null and the third one returns 999. Okay, let's run that. Okay, our test now hangs, and I really don't know why. I've asked the question on Stack Overflow and on the Kotlin Slack, and people have been helpful, but we really haven't got to the bottom of it yet. So, instead of using mock for the pricing, in the past we've used a map, and we'll do the same again. I'm going to create a map in here, we'll call it price list, and that's going to be a mutable map. It's going to take an item and return an available price. And now we can use price lists get value as our source of pricing. So we take that out. And now the equivalent here of these mock expectations is to add things to that map. So here we can say price list at stock list zero, etc. equals those things. So now our price stock list loader will use the map lookup and we populated the map. Let's run. Okay, that does run to completion. Let's see what we expect. Well, we are actually now seeing the prices in here. So we'll have to change what we expect in here. We'll inline that. And now let's add the prices in. So we can say here, this is copy price, success of a price of 666. The middle one is success of null. There is no price for it, but we did successfully look up that fact. And here, that should be our 999. Let's see whether we're right. Good. Okay, this is a bit noisy here, so I think we can probably say that what we want to do is we want to take the price list, put all, and then we'll have a map of, and that map will consist of the item to the price. And actually, we can remove the one in the middle. Let's see whether we're right. And we're not. 
Ah, here we have a no such element exception, and we're relying on get value, which throws, if we replace that with get, we will be fine, I think. Let's find out. Good. Get here returns null if there isn't an item, whereas get value throws. One thing to note, though, is I'll run this again. That test is taking over a second to run, and that second and a half is the price we're paying for using mock here. But now we've used a map instead of a mock for our price list, we could probably do the same for our stock. Stock, they remember, is a class. It's a class with only one method on it, the one we're using. Let's go back and have a look in the price stock list loader. And here you see we have a dependency on stock, but we're only actually using that one method from it. So let's see if we can depend on the method, or in fact a function type, rather than the stock itself. As per usual, we're going to make this back into a block. And now we can say that the function we're interested in, which I think we'll call loading, is our stock stock list. It's a reference to that function. And we look at its type. It's something that takes a time and returns the result, a stock list. We've got that, we can now use it here. And we'll run the test to check that's true. After two seconds, we find out it is. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this thing out as a parameter to our stock list loader. IntelliJ messes up the types here, but we know the type we actually want is this thing. So we can give it that type. And we can name this to be our loading. Note now that our stock is unused, and that's because in the places we call this, here for example, IntelliJ has introduced the value that we're using inside our function, which is good. So if we go back here, we don't need that at all. We can, we can rearrange these. So we load before we price, probably don't need to name that. And now we can inline this. And finally return this to be its expression. And run. Now we're still mocking, which is why that's still taking over two seconds. And note that in our tests, we are now using the method reference here to the mocked thing here. And it still works, which is nice. But we can create ourselves another map. And the type of that is going to be instant to the return type of our loader, which we know here is this result of stock list. Let's take that and put it back here. And now we can use stock values, get value, in place of our mock. Take that out. And then finally, we can populate the map. So we can say stock values given the same day as the last modified is success of our stock list. Are we right? Let's run. And that was 133 milliseconds as opposed to two and a half seconds. What would happen if we'd called this with the wrong value? For example, we'd passed in last modified in here. Well, it would fail in pretty much the same way as our mock did. In fact, here we're getting no such element exception, which is perfect. Undo that and run again. Good. Finally, we'll have a little tidy up that's unused. And these instant pars and so on are really quite noisy. What I found useful in these cases is to say, if we import instant.pars as instant, in fact, in the case of times, just T for time, then we can take these things and replace them with a T. And we can do the same with the local dates. So we can say local date pars as local date and replace these with a local date. Make that private to modify IntelliJ and run again. There are two basic reasons that we use mocks in our tests. One is to stop our tests doing something that we don't want them to do. For example, sending an email to somebody or launching that rocket. But another reason is because we need a value and it's an expensive value to compute or that it takes a lot of setup to put it into the right place so that our actual code can read it from there. In the second case, which is where we are here, this technique of using maps and function references works really well. 
I'd be interested to know if anyone else does this. If you do, please let me know in the comments below. There are two chapters in the book that are open that price covering this topic. One is interfaces to functions and the other is mocks to maps. If you've enjoyed this, I think you'll get value for the book. Details are in the show notes below. Thanks for watching.